action. Hello, my name is Mark Walker. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the CPA evolution from the OSCPA website. Um, the, the reason why I chose this topic and the importance of it is because in 2024 there's going to be some changes to the CPA exam and new or potential CPAs need to understand the importance of these changes and how it's going to impact their future for the CPA exam and for everyone else. But, be, but before we get into that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the four E's. Now, the four E's are education, exam, experience, and ethics. Firstly, with education, it doesn't really involve the potential CPAs. It's more so the teachers who are teaching these CPAs. It's their purpose, their job, to help educate these potential CPA students um, and get their education at their highest before they can take the exam and study using tools like that for CPA. Next is just the exam itself. The exam is just giving, taking the exam and then getting your license after the exam. That's the, the simple part about the four E's. Next we have the experience. Now experience is talking a little bit about how long it need, you need to take to prepare for the exam. So it usually takes about one to two years for most um, students to prepare for this exam, whether it's with Becker CPA or, or other um, CPA tools. It takes about one to two years. And then finally, ethics. Um, in some states, they actually there actually is a separate exam from the CPA exam, where you have to take an ethics exam to see if you're compromised in terms of your ethic, ethical understanding of business. So then you don't, when you get your CPA, you don't make mistakes like Bernie Madoff or uh, Jordan Belfort did back when they were um, using money, but in, the, in their respective fields. Um, and finally, the practical analysis on why they are changing the CPA um, exam up a little bit is to make sure people have the correct knowledge and skills of accounting, auditing, and the simple backgrounds of, uh, of accounting. And then finally, they want to add a specific discipline that each student can choose from to have a further understanding into. So it's mainly, the goal is to have a strong accounting background with, a, with some respective domains as to what they potentially could be going into in their respective fields, whether it's tax, IT, or whatever the case may be. Next, we, this is what it's going to be looking like in the next year or so. Starting in January 2024, the CPA exam is going to look what it looks like on the right side. This is what we have right now. We have auditing, fall, uh, fi financial accounting and reporting, uh, tax and regulation, and then business environment and content. Now, the top three with auditing, FAR, and REG, those three are going to stay the same for, for the most part, with some minor changes in terms of what's going to be on the exams. But BEC is basically going to get in, get dissolved into three separate disciplines, is what they're calling it. So we got the three cores, which is staying the same from what it is now. And then now we have these three separate disciplines of FAR, ISC, and TCP. Um, some new content that's going to be added on into the exams include IT, information systems, data management, and specifically for tax compliance and planning, there's personal finance, which no one has really ever seen before on the CPA exam. Now, the importance of this is to understand that once 2024 hits, students cannot take the BEC. So if a new, newly potential CPA wants to take the BEC and they understand it well enough and they're running out of time before 2024, I would highly recommend taking the BEC as soon as possible just because once 2024 hits and not no longer take the BEC, you have to take the three cores and then your choice of one of the select disciplines down below. Um, next, we a little bit talk about a little bit about blueprints and allocations. So blueprints are basically tell you what's going to kind of be on the exam, like your learning objectives for the exam. So first, first section for a blueprint, you have content, organization, and weight. Then you have scale allocation and weight, then representative tax, and then references to tell you later on with what's basically on this exam. So this is specifically about the allocation of section of the exam, the scale allocation. So there's four, this is for the FAR exam. This is actually what's going to be current, or what's currently on it, not so much of what's going to be happening in 2024. But there's four areas with specific weights about on what of what's going to be on the exam. So you can see like conceptual framework and financial reporting has 25, 35 percent, 
financial statement accounts, 30 to 40, select transaction, and then state and local governments have their own little allocation of skill and time that they need to focus on. Um, so when they decided to add these new um, topics into the exam, whether it be IT, information systems, data management, whatever it may be, um, the board had to go and talk to people and to find new questions because they had never had this on the exam before. So they had to go out and go talk to people to see how much should be allocated to each part of this exam, whether it be IT, information systems, whatever the case may be. Next, we have a little bit about the score rating. So it's a little bit different now. Um, as you can see, for the most part, it's all pretty much 50-50 between multiple choice questions and then task-based simulations. Um, excuse me. Um, as you can see with the ISC, it's a little bit more weighted on the multiple choice questions just because there's um, scale allocations, which I meant mentioned a little bit earlier. So the scale allocations include remembering and understanding, application, and analysis. Now the ISC is very heavily weighted on remember, remembering and understanding. Therefore, there's not as many uh, TBSs in that section just because uh, it's mainly remembering and understanding. So all you need to do is take multiple choice questions there. So that's why it's heavily favored in that section. Um, talking a little bit more about how long it's, the exam is um, and what type of questions are gonna be on there. So each section of the exam, so all four sections that you take, three, four, and then one is the discipline, each are about four hours long. You have four hours to take it with at least six task-based simulation questions. Um, it's different for each exam, but the minimum you will see on one of the sections is six, and then the minimum you will see on the multiple choice questions it's about 50, so of course it gets higher from 50, but that is the minimum amount of questions you will see on the exam, and you have four hours to complete that exam. So finally, my advice for potential new CPAs, right? So as I mentioned before, they are getting rid of the BEC. So if the BEC is easy for you, take it before 2024 hits, and then you don't have to worry about taking a discipline. If those disciplines don't really hit your wheelhouse, right? Um, but say you're strong in technology, but dislike business, and you're not even going to be really using your CPA to do business work. You can pass the I ISC, and you can avoid taking the, the BEC in 2023. Now, say FAR seems overwhelming as it is right now, because there are going to be minor changes within the core disciplines. They're, just, they're taking out some of the harder material and putting in, in IT and technology all across um, the, each of the sections, so it's a little bit easier next year. So if you pass FAR in 2024, some complicated uh, topics will be relocated to the FAR section, which means you don't have to take the FAR necessarily unless you want to, because it is one of the disciplines, and you can only and you choose only one out of the three. And then finally, if you're eligible to sit before 2024, pass Reg and Odd before 2024. Reg currently has a high pass rate, and Odd may. Be more difficult in 2024. So those are just a little bit um, some advice I would have for new CPAs or potential new CPAs, including myself. I'm definitely going to be using um, some of these um, advices for me because I plan on getting my CPA here within the next year, and it's very important to me that I either take the BEC before um, you go into the disciplines, or I wait to take FAR in 20, until 2024 as some of the more complicated topics will be in bar, which I won't have to take if I do end up taking BEC. So it's very important that um, newly, potential new CPAs understand this. It's very important. The CPA has evolved, is evolving so much within the next year. It's, it's going to be a new process for almost everyone involved. It could be difficult at times, but as long as you put your mind to it and effort into it, you will become a newly licensed CPA, and the evolution will just be natural. Finally, these are my references. Um, are there any questions?